So for those of you game devs that aren't living under a rock, you'd already know that Brachies has returned to creating game dev tutorials, this time with videos using the Godot game engine. Unfortunately for me, my toxic trait is assuming that I can learn things without reading references or following tutorials. So in this video, I'll be trying to learn Godot by recreating some old Flash games from my childhood. Firstly, we're going to need to choose a game. The first Flash game that came to my mind when I got this idea was Yeti Sports Penguin Throw. So here's how we're going to recreate the game. Firstly, I'll need to download the original file. I'll use Flashpoint for this, it's a program for downloading and playing old Flash games. And next, we'll need to obtain the assets within the Flash game. For this, I'll be using a program called JPEX's Free Flash Decompiler. Once we've got all of the assets, we can just import them straight into Godot. The first thing I'll do is set up the main menu. It's fairly simple, a graphical image, some text and a single button which flashes. Next will be the game scene. I'll begin by placing all of the graphical elements into the scene, adding some collisions for the floor and start working on the penguin code. Now I'm too embarrassed to show my GD script code in this video, so I've chosen to omit that portion. But here it is. Annoyingly similar to the original, the penguin is difficult to hit. I also was able to add some creature comforts like displaying and also saving high scores. So let's have a quick recap on how that went. So in terms of recreatability, I'd give Yeti Sports Pingu Throw a Pingu rating of 5. It's simple enough that you're not overwhelmed by elements that you'll need to add to the game. For skills learned, I'd give it a 2 out of 5 Pingus. The drawback with recreating a simple game is that while you have a finished product in a short amount of time, you haven't actually learned anything new. Sure, you've got some basic UI, some physics, and some data saving, but that was all I took away from this project. And finally, playability. Did I manage to produce a recreation that was fun and engaging to play for hours? Nah, not really. So we got a 3 ping rating. It may be due to the repetitive nature of the game, but unless you're at the back of the classroom dying for some form of entertainment, you wouldn't be playing this in your free time. So moving on from yetis and penguins, we're going to be shifting our attention to Line Rider. I'm sure everyone over the age of 20 has played this game. For those of you that haven't, Line Rider is a sandbox game where you draw a course for a guy on a sled to ride on. It's rather simple in concept, but to recreate, quite the opposite. We'll start off with the same procedure as Yeti Sports. Downloading the game and extracting the assets we'll be needing. Now of course, there won't be many. Aside from the title screen elements, the main game consists of the player and five buttons. The rest is up for you to create. Now due to the fact that this isn't meant to be a tutorial of any kind, and the fact that I struggled immensely by this project, I'll skip over the development side of this project and get straight to the gameplay. And well, it sort of speaks for itself. Does it work? Yes. Is it a bit janky? Yeah. Trying to convert the drawn line into something collidable for the player really took some time and years off of my life. And as a result, I didn't even bother to add any animations to the player. So let's move on to the ratings. For recreatability, it's got to be a 1. Although I got it working in the end, this was too complex for a beginner to tackle blind. Skills learned. The positive to being in over your head with a project is that you're forced into learning new things, and with this project I learned a lot about the capabilities of Godot. Learned some camera tricks for following the player and panning the screen, some slight physics, and I'm now intimately familiar with the lines node. Playability. You know what? 
Despite the character not being animated and giving no physical feedback, the game is actually fun to play. You have endless possibilities due to the sandbox nature, and you can easily end up spending an hour playing this. So we get to 4. Alright, let's do one more game before we end, and how could we even discuss Flash games without mentioning the king of all Flash games? Balloons. You're a dart throwing monkey, what's not to get? Clear as many balloons as you can, the better score you get. So for one last time, let's borrow some game elements and we'll start on the level select screen. And the level select screen is probably where I should have stopped. As it turns out, the small amount of physics skills I had learned from the prior two games did not qualify me for dart simulation. And as a result, this project did not receive the level of attention it deserved. I had spent hours trying to get a dart to move in a somewhat realistic manner, and as soon as that was achieved, I gave up on the project. I had lost all desire to continue, and my code was a garbled mess that even I don't understand myself. If Lion Rider took years off of my life, this took decades away from my future. So here it is, my final product. A single stage with six balloons. And could I revisit this and polish up a few elements? Sure. I could randomly select a colour for the balloons. I could rotate the dart based on its trajectory. And these two things alone would polish the game up and make it feel a lot more like it should. But will I do it? No. This project will never be seeing the light of day again. The results? Recreatability. <laughs> Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Zero. Skills learned? <laughs> Some UI elements using grid containers and physics, except I now feel like I know even less about physics. Playability. If I had created more than one stage, it may be fun for perhaps five minutes, but this definitely doesn't capture the beauty of the original. Thus, one point. So, if you're thinking about getting into Godot and wondering if jumping in blind is a good idea, would I recommend it? No. My advice? Go watch Bracky's tutorial. Seriously. It's fantastic. So, until next time, stay awesome and funky.